morning, boys and girls. It's good to see you all today. Um, good to be here with you again. Um, I'm excited about uh, continuing to sing with you and pray with you and study God's Word. And uh, we're going to do that right now. We are going to open up with prayer, and then we are going to sing, and then we're going to open up God's Word and uh, study it. So let's close our eyes, let's bow our heads, quiet our lips, and let's pray. Oh God, we are grateful uh, for your kindness to allow us to gather again to study your word, even uh, in this format. Thank you for uh, the technology and the privilege we have to be able to do these things. I pray for these students and for their families that you'll continue to bless them and take care of them. Um, help them to be well uh, this weekend as they have celebrated um, even yesterday with uh, the 4th of July, our Independence Day, uh, that we uh, declare um, that we are independent, Father, and we thank you for those that have fought uh, to, to give us freedom, that we can celebrate as a country uh, the freedoms that you have blessed us with. But, Lord, we thank you that we, as believers, we celebrate a greater freedom, and that is freedom given to us in Christ. Uh, Father, we um, submit ourselves to you, but you are the greatest master the greatest Lord that could ever be. You are pure, just, and holy, and rightly deserving of honor and glory. And we pray that we would uh, give you that glory this morning. Help us to turn our attention and our hearts upon you, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, we're going to uh, start out by singing um, uh, a little bit different song. Um, one for uh, some of our younger group, but uh, everybody can sing this. I sing this song all the time, and you know it well. Uh, it's Jesus Love Me. Uh, Jesus Loves Me. Uh, we're going to uh, sing that, and then we are going to uh, go into our Jesus Strong and Kind song um, that we have been learning together. So uh, let's start out by singing Jesus Loves Me. And uh, we're even going to do the second verse that a lot of you fours and fives and people, uh, children that have been in the fours and fives class, uh, Mrs. Reynolds uh, has taught that with us, uh, where it says, I love Jesus, does he know? Have I ever told him so? Um, we're going to sing that verse together, and um, I look forward to singing this song uh, with you this morning. It's one of my favorites, uh, Jesus Loves Me, and then we'll go into Jesus Strong and Kind. All right, let's sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. All right. I love Jesus. Does he know? I love Jesus. Does he know? Have I ever told him so? Jesus loves to hear me say that I love him every day. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. In prayer, I tell him so. Boys and girls, I hope you do say that every day, that you love Jesus. You do that when you pray. You do that any time of the day, because we should love Jesus, because he loves us, and he has loved us first. Sing Jesus strong and kind. Jesus said that if I thirst, I should come to him. Jesus said that if I thirst, I should come to him. No one else can satisfy, I should come to him. Jesus said, if I am weak, I should come to him. No one else can be my strength, 
I shall come to him. For the Lord is good and faithful. He will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Jesus said that if I fear, I should come to him. No one else can be my shield, I should come to him. For the Lord is good and faithful, he will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Jesus said, if I am lost, Jesus said that if I'm lost, he will come to me. And he showed me on that cross, he will come to me. Yes, he did. For the Lord is good and faithful, He will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. For the Lord is good and faithful. Lord is good and faithful, He will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind, Jesus strong and kind. Oh, good singing, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed singing uh, this morning. I'm uh, thankful for the time to sing with you all and uh, look forward to being able to hear you uh, sing um, uh, with me uh, when we get to get back together. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy singing Jesus Loves Me this morning because that's, that's one of the truest songs um, that, that we can sing because Jesus loves me, and I know that because the Bible has told me so, and we can trust what the Bible says. And so that's why we study it. That's why we read it. And, and that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to turn our minds and our attention to our Bibles. So if you don't have your Bibles, take your Bibles and turn to 2 Samuel. And we are going to be studying 2 Samuel chapter 7, where God has promised that Jesus would come from David's family. 2 Samuel chapter 7. And while you're turning there, can you tell me about your family? If I were with you right now and I asked you about your family, what could you tell me about your family? Maybe how many cousins do you have? How many brothers and sisters do you have? How many aunts and uncles do you have? Well, think about this. Imagine how many children you might have in your future family. Now that might be uh, how many children in your own family, in your mom, with your mom and dad? Maybe they will have more children. Or what about one day when you grow up and you become an adult and you're married and you desire to have children? And if God blesses you with children, how many children might you have? That's something that might be scary to think about, that, that you have little ones running around that you have to care for, take and, uh, and watch out for, and provide for. But boys and girls, today we are going to hear a story about, uh, from the Bible about a covenant that God made with David, a covenant, a promise that God made with King David. And it has to do with the children that David would have in the future, his descendants, the ones that come after him, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, his great-great-great-great-grandchildren, and his nieces and his nephews and all of those that would be in the line of David, and how God made a promise according to that and according to those descendants. Can you think of any other times in the Bible 
that God made a covenant. Remember, what a covenant means is God made a promise, okay? Can you think of any other times where God made a promise? Yeah, those are probably, uh, those are good, good promises and good, uh, good covenants that God made. Well, let's find out more, okay? So let's go into God's Word and let's, let's find out more about this promise, this covenant that God made. Things were, they were not looking up for David. Uh, Saul, King Saul, had tried multiple times to kill him. He had tried to attack him. He even tried to get his own son to kill him, Jonathan, who last week we studied was David's, one of David's best friends. But David had fled for his life. He, he left everything behind, and he even left his good friend, Jonathan. God had appointed David to be king, and God was faithful to fulfill what he said that he would do and what his appointment was. And leading up to 2 Samuel chapter 7, Jonathan was killed in battle against the Philistines. And Jonathan was killed in this battle, and Saul even fell on his own sword, meaning that it, it killed him, that he died. And so now Jonathan is out of the picture, now Saul is out of the picture, and David rightfully becomes king over Israel. And then David moved the Ark of the Covenant, that God, um, um, the Ark of God, to Jerusalem. This is the Ark that God had declared this is uh, where the Israelites believed God dwelled. This, is, uh, this was His presence amongst them. That's where He would be. Now, I want you to open your Bibles, if you haven't already, to 2 Samuel chapter 7. And let's look in our Bibles at chapter 7 and how David settled into his place and, and how God gave him peace from his enemies, okay? Let's look at that. 2 Samuel chapter 7. Verse 1, when the king had settled into his palace and the Lord had given him rest on every side from all his enemies, the king said to the prophet Nathan, this is David, okay? So when it refers to the king, it's referring to David. The king said to the prophet Nathan, look, I am living in a cedar house while the ark of God sits inside tent curtains. So Nathan told the king, Go and do all that is in your mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go to my servant David and say, This is what the Lord says, Are you to build me a house to dwell in? From the time I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until today I have not dwelt in a house. Instead, I have been moving around with tent as my dwelling. In all my journeys with all of the Israelites, have I ever spoken a word to one of the tribes of Israel whom, I, um, whom I'm commanded to shepherd my people Israel asking, why haven't you built me in a house of cedar? So now, this is what you are to say to my servant David. This is what the Lord of armies says. I took you from the pasture, from the tending of the flock, to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. I will make a great name for you like that of the greatest on earth. I will designate a place for my people Israel and plant them so that they may live there and not be disturbed again. Evildoers will not continue to oppress them as they have done. Ever since the day I ordered judges to be over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you, the Lord himself will make a house for you. When your time comes and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up after you your descendant who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. Boys and girls, are you hearing this? God is making the promise, the covenant to David. He is the one who will build a house for my name. For my name. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he will be my son. 
When he does wrong, I will discipline him with a rod of men and blows from mortals. But my faithful love will never leave him as it did when I removed it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and kingdom will endure before me forever. And your throne will be established forever. Nathan reported all these words and this entire vision to David. Now, boys and girls, when David looked around, something was wrong. He realized that something was wrong. He was living in this majestic palace while the ark of God was in a tent. And so David determined to build God a temple. Now, what was the problem here? What was the problem here? Because that there was an issue. David lived in a cedar house, a beautiful place, while the ark of God lived in a tent. Verse uh, 2 of chapter 7 tells us. And what did David want to do about it? Well, David said he wanted to build a house for God. Now, do you think, listen to me, do you think that it would be right for a king to live in a beautiful wooden palace while God lived in a tent? No, no, no way. That wouldn't be right. You know, that wouldn't be right at all. And so that night, God gave Nathan, the prophet Nathan, a vision. Have I ever asked you to build me a house, God said? And since I brought you, the Israelites, out of Egypt, I have dwelled in a tent. This has been a very long time that God has just been dwelling in a tent. So God reminded David that he used to be a shepherd, that David used to just be among the sheep and the flocks in the field. But then God brought him out of that and made him a royal king and put him into a beautiful palace. God's just reminding David of the blessings that he has done for David. And so now, um, God promised to give them rest from their enemies, the Israelites, and so they could stop fighting. And so David could now focus on what was right and what was needed to be done, and that was to give God rightfully a new place to dwell, a new house. And though God denied David's desire to build a house that we'll find out here in just a moment, God promised to make a house for David. God promised that he was going to do something miraculous for David. He said, I am going to make you a dynasty of descendants and an everlasting kingdom. This is meaning, David, you are going to go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. God said that David's kingdom would last forever, boys and girls. Now, that does not mean that David would live forever, okay? Don't get me wrong. David was not going to live forever, but God said that one of David's descendants would always be king. God promised that Jesus would come from David and his family. Now, boys and girls, this was something that was astonishing to David. And God kept his promise. And so we see, uh, you'll probably uh, see in the, in the picture above, uh, that David is coming before the Lord in verse 18. Look at this. Look at verse 18. Then King David went in and he sat in the Lord's presence and said, Who am I, Lord God? And what is my house that you have brought me this far? What you have done so far was a little thing to you. What, sorry, what you have done so far was a little thing to you, Lord God. For you have also spoken about your servant's house in the distant future. And this is a revelation for mankind, Lord God. What more can David say to you? You know your servant, Lord God. Because of your word and according to your will, you have revealed all these great things to your servant. This is why you are great, Lord God. There is no one like you, and there is no God beside you. And as all we have heard confirms, and who is like your people, Israel, 
God came to one nation on earth in order to redeem a people for himself, to make a name for himself, to perform for them great and awesome acts, driving out nations and their gods before your people. You redeemed yourself from, God, from Egypt. You established your people, Israel, to be your own people forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. Now, Lord God, Yahweh, fulfill the promise forever that you have made to your servant and his house. Do as you have promised, so that your name will be exalted forever when it is said, The Lord of armies is God over Israel. The house of your servant David will be established before you. Since you, Lord of armies, God of Israel, have revealed this to your servant when you said, I will build a house for you. Therefore, your servant has found uh, the courage to pray this prayer to you. Lord God, you are a God. Your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now please bless your servant's house so that it will continue before you forever. For you, Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing, your servant's house will be blessed forever. Now, boys and girls, we see that God promised that Jesus would come from David's family. God promised that Jesus would come from David's family. And... and um, God kept his promises by sending his son, Jesus, to be one of David's descendants. And in verses 18 all the way through verse 29, David is giving a prayer of thanksgiving. He's rejoicing at what God has promised him. God has come to him and he's saying, My favor is going to be upon you, David, and it will last forever. It's not going to be like Saul. You see, Saul... He sinned and he was condemned. I removed my favor from him and I put it upon you. And David, that's going to continue forever. And I'm going to bring blessing upon you and your descendants. And, you, and your descendants will rule forever. And one day there's going to be a great king that comes. And boys and girls, God fulfilled that promise. God fulfilled that promise in sending his son Jesus to be one of David's descendants. And Jesus is our king who will never die. And he will rule over God's people forever. And he will do it perfectly. He will, he will do it with God's favor. And he will do it without ever doing anything wrong. Boys and girls, we've asked ourselves this question We've asked ourselves this question, who is our king? Who is our king and how have we answered that? Jesus is our king forever and he rules over the world. Jesus is our king forever and he rules over the world forever. Boys and girls, we must understand the significance of David's everlasting kingdom. God's promise to David was ultimately fulfilled by his most significant descendant, and that was Jesus Christ. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. That is a promise from God. Now, boys and girls, a king deserves respect and honor, does he not? What are some ways we can honor Jesus as king? Okay, yeah, those are good. We can honor Jesus by, uh, by praying. We pray to him, okay? We can honor him by speaking about him and, and speaking about him well. We can honor him just like we did this morning by singing about him. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. And then what was that other second verse that we read? I love Jesus. Does he know? Have I ever told him so? Jesus loves to hear me say that I love him every day. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. In prayer, I tell him so. 
Boys and girls, do you do that? Do you say in prayer, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for coming to be our king forever. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for giving your life for me, for taking my sins upon you. Boys and girls, that's how we honor a king. Boys and girls, there's not many kings, and really there's no king that would give his life as Jesus did. One way we can honor Jesus is singing about him. We can make sure to study about him. We can try to obey him the best that we can. Honoring Jesus involves us listening to him and those who he has put in authority over us. Did you know that it honors the Lord when you obey your mom and dad? Do you know that it honors Jesus when you listen well to your teachers at school? Do you know that it honors Jesus when you are kind to your brothers and your sisters? That's how we can honor Jesus. That's how we can respect him. Luke chapter 1 verses 32 and 33 reads, He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. It says, He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. That is our King Jesus. Boys and girls, we've been reading about um, this psalm that you see before you, Psalm 47 verses 7 through 8, that talk about our God and how he is king over all the earth. Hey, read that with me, if you will, right now. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. Amen. Boys and girls, there is nothing that will take God by surprise, and He deserves our respect. He deserves our honor, and we can give that to Him this day, right? We can praise Him in the way that we sing. We can praise Him in the way that we treat others. We can praise Him and worship Him in the way that we honor those that He has put before us. We love Him, and we need to tell Him that daily, right? Let's do that now as we pray. Let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that we have the privilege to be able to study it together, to know you, to love you, and to uh, rejoice in the wonderful things that you have done on our behalf. Help us, Father, to be mindful of, of who you are and to daily say to you, because you love to hear us say that we love you when we pray. Not just when we pray, Father, but always. Maybe we tell other people, you know what? I love Jesus. I love God. He is so good to me. Lord, may we do that, and may we honor you in doing that faithfully. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, um, uh, praying for you, and I hope that you have a wonderful week uh, with your families. Enjoy this holiday weekend. Be safe, and until next time, I love you, and I'm praying for you. Have a wonderful, um, uh, wonderful rest of your day. Take care.